Ladies and gentlemen, hi, Kevin O'Connell, Associate Health Spokesperson, ALCP. You probably realise as we do that the current marijuana prohibition law is failing to protect, promote and improve the public health. Despite the prohibition, a vast number of Kiwis do not seriously consider the use of cannabis to be a crime. With a prevalence of four to 500,000 consumers, these are people from all walks of life, people you see from day to day in your practices, but quite possibly these are also the people that you're not seeing. The alienated underclass, those least likely to be listening to health messages, least likely to have faith in government services and support agencies, those most at risk from preventable disease. Criminalisation is a very poor health service indeed. Because politicians have been scared of the issue, politics has allowed evidence to be overridden in the national drug policy. The evidence of the cost effectiveness of pro prohibition has been deleted, or the cost ineffectiveness, I should say. As a result, New Zealand has an increasingly outmoded, damaging and dishonest implementation of harm minimisation. Failure to measure criminalisation harms ill serves us all and endangers those most vulnerable. Many of you will be aware that there are bona fide medicinal applications of cannabinoids for pain relief, muscle spasms, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, for suppressing nausea, for appetite stimulation, cancer treatment relief, phantom limb pain, the list goes on. And it's interesting too to note that the US federal government holds patents on cannabis as a neuroprotectant, while at the same time denying, denying medical validity of cannabis. In fact, the medical efficacy of cannabis justifies its legalisation, not its criminalisation. Although the ill treatment of medicinal canna cannabis consumers is probably the most inhumane aspect of current law enforcement, ALCP is concerned at the whole range of harms, costs and social damage occurring because of the prohibition. The black market, racially loaded arrests and imprisonment, and the general uncontrolled availability of herb and impaired health promotion. It's a particular concern to see so many young people with little or no trust in the alcohol and other drug education, double standards and inconsistent rules which are supposed to be protecting them. James Webster is one tragic example of the misinformation and peer pressure. But there are hundreds of thousands of other binge drinkers at high risk too from the hypocrisy of New Zealand's harm prevention framework and tens of thousands of other young New Zealanders drawn into tobacco, cannabis or chronic use but behind your backs. This has to change. Politicians are failing all of us by failing to resolve the double standards. Their own select committee 13 years ago pointed out that the double standards are an impediment to effective anti-drug education. The dope grower goes to jail while the violent drug liquor is advertised on television and sponsors the All Blacks. R18 for tobacco, but apparently only for the person who is buying it. Hypocrisy rules in New Zealand. The 1986 Ottawa Charter that you'll be familiar with requires identification and removal of obstacles to health promotion in non-health sectors. And I put it to you that this is the classic example of law enforcement rendering useless what could be a meaningful, not for children, message. For all our sakes, New Zealand's adherence to the Ottawa Charter needs to walk the talk. ALCP is here to put a conscience into Parliament and failing that to raise consciousness amongst our fellow New Zealanders, including your good selves. It's time for sensible and equitable regulations. Our evidence-based policy follows harm minimisation principles and was fact originally borrowed from the Premier's Drugs Advisory Council, Victoria, Australia, 1996. Notably recommended a five-plant adults home grow model for cannabis and expungement of convictions, amongst other things. LCP policy specifies strictly adults only, R18 regulation which includes de-glamorisation and enabling credible education about real risks. It also provides health support or counselling for those who run into problems with their cannabis use. For example, also we can implement user-friendly quit programmes such as those currently available for tobacco smoking. Our policy provides for homegrown medicinal cannabis as well as prescribed therapeutic cannabis and cannabinoid preparations and pills, Marinol, Drobinol, and there's exciting potential here for helping and treating and curing patients. Legalising will also promote safer use harm reduction, smoke-free modes such as vaporisation and mouth sprays. Importantly, the black market gateway to hard drugs is also substantially closed by bringing the widespread cannabis use within rule of law. ALCP policy promotes and enables cannabis hemp cropping for an organic and pollution-free environment. There are brilliant uses such as biofuel and hempcrete which could be the future of New Zealand, embracing the concept of clean and green natural order. 
Our policy will put THC-free cannabis hemp seed on the menu. The seed is nature's most nutritious food source, complete and balanced, providing essential fatty acids, omega-3, 6 and 9, plus vitamins and minerals. And of course, the cottage industry of R18 Dutch-style cafes will bring quality control, job opportunities and tourism as a much-needed boost to the beleaguered economy. We don't apologise for legalising. Controlled availability and a level playing field is a vast improvement on uncontrolled availability and systemic hypocrisy. Our policy impacts beneficially across the intersectoral policy spectrum, but particularly has positive implications for good health, social justice and law and order. So in fact we're empowering and capacity building New Zealand, turning money and effort that is currently being squandered on failure and discrimination into programs for success, into civilised services that benefit all New Zealanders, including of course primary health care providers. R18 is our primary health intervention. And a final word on mental health. Heavy consumers in partic particular are subject to stigma, bullying, taboo, exclusion, discrimination, hatred and finger pointing. Is that supposed to be good for mental health? Really, we don't expect your vote, but we do ask you to help New Zealanders help themselves by helping us change this far worse than useless law. The difference between doing something wrong and doing it right is actually quite considerable. Keep up the good work. Thanks for your time and good health, everyone.